live church. It is so good to have you with us and to be able to connect together as a church. We've got so many great things coming up. But before we jump into worship, let's reflect a little on scripture. The passage we're going to look at is from Romans 8, the letter from the Apostle Paul to the church in Rome. He says this, For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons, by whom we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. So from this passage, we learn that once we receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and personal Saviour, the Holy Spirit comes in to dwell within us. And when we live in accordance with the Holy Spirit, He Himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. So join us as we sing, Who You Say I Am. Who am I that the highest King would welcome me? I was lost, but He bore me in all His love.
kids, I hope you're okay. Hope you've had a great week, whether that's been at school or not. And I hope you've enjoyed the worship this morning. So we've got some more great resources for you that you can download from our website today. They are continuing with our Bible Heroes series. We hope you have a great time doing those. Now this week, we've got something new for you. Every week, we are going to be putting out on our social media channels, a family challenge, something you can do with your family. Now this could range from craft to something musical with some worship, or it might be some baking, or just a challenge that you and your family can get involved in. We'd love you to have a go at these. And we'd also love you, if you can, to film them and send them to us so we can see how you're getting on with them. You can send them to kids at alivechurch.org.uk. Now, some of you might need your parents to help you with that, but we would absolutely love to see you have a go at those and let us know how you're getting on. We cannot wait to hear from you. Thank you. Goodbye. Hello Alive Youth, it's great to be with you here today. I hope you all had a great week. I know I did. I got to go back to work this week, so praise the Lord, things are moving in the right direction. Okay, so I hope you were able to catch the Nathan Benger podcast this week. It was really, really good. And we've got another one coming up, and that's with our very own Nick and Jonas from Alive Grantham. So keep a lookout for that, all right? Okay, so what else is happening? Well, we've got connect groups this week, and that's going to be taking place in all locations. If you haven't had a chance to be able to connect up with the connect group or link up with us, then uh, go onto our Instagram at We Are Alive Youth, and we will get you sorted. Lately in uh, Wyndham, we have just finished our Youth Alpha, uh, where seven of our youth were able to take part in that, and it was really, really successful. And we've got another Youth Alpha going on in all the locations, and we've got 10 youth that are signed up for that. So God is working in amazing ways around the locations. Okay, we've also got Friday Night Show being hosted and inspired by our, by our very own Matt Loft. It is amazing. It's going to be great. Kicks off at 7.30 on YouTube. Check it out. All right. Okay. I want to pray with you, youth, now, if that's okay with you. And then we're going to move on. All right. Father God, thank you so much for the youth in all our locations. We praise you for their hunger for you. And we just praise you for the way that you're working within them. We ask you to be with them always, keep them safe and healthy during this time. And as we go into the future, just let them know that you are with them at all times. Praise you for all the love that they bring to us. Amen. Okay, so it just leaves me to do one more thing. You know it. Yeah, we love you. And guess what? There is nothing you can do about it. We're going to take communion together now. I want to read from uh, the account in the book of Luke. In Luke 22, verse 19. And he took bread. He gave thanks and he broke it. He gave it to them saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. Jesus asks us to do this and when we do it we remember him and I think there's two elements to uh, this this reminding process Uh, we remember his sacrifice and his love and his goodness we remind ourselves but there's another way that perhaps we don't think of as often in the Old Testament the Hebrew people would uh, give or make memorial sacrifices to remind God of his covenant with them In Genesis, when it talks about uh, God and the flood and after the flood, the rainbow appeared and he said uh, to Noah, I will uh, never forget my promises or my covenant to you when I see the rainbow. And so there's something about us today, taking bread and drinking wine and reminding ourselves of God's love, but also holding up before God the sacrifice that Jesus made on our account so that we would be free and reminding him and ourselves the promises of freedom, the promises of hope and the promises of health for our body and our soul as we connect with heaven today. Let's pray. 
Thank you, Jesus, for your body broken and your blood shed. And as we remind ourselves, we also uh, remind our Father in heaven that Jesus made a sacrifice so that we could go free. And we thank you, God, that you gave your son so freely and he gave his life so that we could live. Amen. We're going to take communion now and there'll be a countdown on the screen. As you gather your family uh, together and the people around you, let's celebrate the life that Jesus bought for us and remind God and ourselves of his sacrifice and his love.
all will be over Soon we will meet I'll save your face to face All I Okay.
We've come to that time in our service where we'll receive our tithes and our offerings. Last week, Paul and Joy reminded us from Acts chapter two that said this, all the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. And they reminded us of that loving community that the church is. I want to remind us as we give today that we're a community. We're not designed to live life on our own, but we're designed to live life together. And I want to say a huge thank you for the way that you've generously continued to give into the life of the church, the community of faith. Over the last couple of months, we've seen standing orders increase across the life. Thank you so much if you've chosen to set up a standing order in these last few months. Alongside that though, we have seen our weekly giving decrease over the past couple of months. In May, through our weekly giving, we received just over 10,000 pounds. But in June, that decreased to just over 8,000 pounds. So if you're somebody who gives electronically, can I encourage you to visit our website today and choose from one of the three ways that you can give. I'd love to encourage you to continue to give in this season. On the website, you could give through PayPal, which is a really secure way for you to give via your card or directly through your bank account. Alternatively, you could give via text today. All the details are on our webpage for how to give up to 20 pounds today via text. Or alternatively, again, you could set up a standing order. Thank you so much for your generosity. Let's take a moment right now to give to the Lord and into the community of faith, the church. Applications for Alive Academy are now open. Alive Academy is an exciting, creative, innovative year out that is open to anyone of any age, stage or background who are looking to further discover what God has placed in them. We passionately believe that your life has purpose and Alive Academy is designed to equip you for a life of discipleship and leadership so you can be all that God has called you to be in whatever sphere he's placed you. This is a one day a week course and will last for an academic year. All the teaching will be online and you will receive teaching from people across Alive, across the ground level network and across the nation. We'll be looking at modules such as theology, discipleship and discovery, community engagement and influence and looking at vision and values. There'll be loads of opportunity for learning, for serving and for connecting and building friendships. You'll also have opportunity to be mentored and for coaching in a specific area. So if you're ready to walk into a year of learning, self-discovery and discipleship, we would love to hear from you. You can go and check out the Academy page on our website where you can find and download an application form and keep an eye on our social media so you can see what we're up to next. Hi, it's so good to be together again. Things are gradually changing, but not in a way that we would have hoped for uh, and as quick as we would have hoped for. But let's remember, we have created many ways where we can still connect together on Sundays and through the week. So stay connected, keep in touch, and we'll all be together. I'd like to welcome a very special guest today, Andy Hawthorne, Overseas Message Trust in Manchester, and there's no better person to get a picture of what God is doing right across the nation. And so let's welcome to Alive, uh, Andy Hawthorne. Hi there, my name's Andy Hawthorne, and it's uh, good to be with you. I wish I could be there in person, but obviously, through the wonders of the internet, I'm uh, broadcasting you here from Manchester and I hope I've got a word that will encourage you this morning. I lead the Message Trust and we do three things. We have creative mission teams and their main focus is schools. We had well over 100 schools missions planned this year. We have Eden teams that live in the most deprived communities and workers that uh, work in prison every day and we provide jobs and uh, homes and wraparound support for ex-offenders who've come to faith. And uh, three months ago, everything came to a shuddering halt after Boris's big announcement. And I remember locking up our building and on that, the morning after, we were all putting lockdown and thinking, 
wow, this is so sad. I'm so gutted that ex-offenders aren't going to be providing jobs and all the beautiful comforters we had on and all our plans to grow the work and then do the outreach in length and breadth of the nation and I had some brilliant plans to travel around the world. I was supposed to be going off to Canada and Uganda and Kenya and all sorts of stuff planned. And then it all came to a halt. Fortunately, the following morning, the Lord really spoke to me through Paul. I mean, how many billions of times will that have been said over the last 2,000 years? Paul, who wrote half the New Testament. Paul had his own season of lockdown. It wasn't three months, it was years locked in a prison cell. He had this massive call on his life to go to the Gentiles with the gospel. Jesus had told him on the Damascus road, I'm your chosen instrument. I'm with you. I'm going to use you. I'm going to send you. And then suddenly his life came to a shuddering halt in the prison cell. And what did he do? He, he kept on encouraging. He kept connected. He kept writing these beautiful letters to the churches. And actually, he did his greatest work. Uh, 2,000 years later, we're still blessed by his faithfulness and the, the words that God inspired Paul to write down, particularly the verse that spoke to me that morning after lockdown, all feeling a bit unsettled and uh, like so many of us, I'm sure in this season, a bit confused about what the future looks like. The scripture that really spoke to me was Paul saying from his prison cell, chained to a Roman guard, I want you to know what has happened to me has actually served served to advance the gospel. I want you to know, Alive Church, what has happened to us is actually going to serve the gospel. It's going to advance the gospel. There were two scriptures that over these last three months have meant a lot to me, perhaps more than any, any others in this season that God has been speaking to me. The first one is Proverbs 16, verse 9. People make their plans, but the Lord orders their steps. And I've got to be like before the Lord at a time like this, forget my plans, Lord. Even though he had some great plans, had some great plans for uh, preaching and every, every couple of days, something will pop up in my diary and I'll think, oh, that sounds amazing, but I'm not doing it. <laughs> forget my plans though. I don't want my plans. I want your plans. And I submit, I surrender. Even though I've put a lot of effort into my plans, all I want to do is your plans. I want you to order my steps, the steps of the message and the steps of the church in this nation. Then anything is possible. The other scripture that's meant a lot to me, and I had ended up preaching online a couple of weeks ago to a conference in Uganda, is Exodus 33, verse 34, where Moses, you know, the man carrying all these glorious promises about the promised land, actually says to the Lord, if your presence doesn't go with us, we don't even want to leave from here. Come on, church, isn't that the truth? If the Lord's presence doesn't go with us, we don't even want to leave lockdown. Let's stay locked down in our houses. Let's not even start gathering again as church if we haven't got the Lord's presence. If he's an Ichabod, the presence of the Lord has departed. Forget it. We need the presence of the Lord. And there are two things I want to run with. The first thing is the Lord's plans. I want the Lord's plans, not my plans. And the Lord has plans for your life prepared in advance, it says in Ephesians chapter two. But I don't just want my plans, I want his presence. Lord, send your presence on your church. That week I started this crazy round of Zoom calls that we've all been experiencing. And the first week of lockdown, I was pretty excited about Zoom actually. You know, suddenly, wow, I mean, I'd used Zoom before, but not so intensively. And suddenly I'm meeting people from all over the world on Zoom. But you know what? Three months later, I'm fed up with Zoom. I'm Zoomed out. I don't want to do any more Zoom calls. I want to see my friends face to face. I want to hug people. I want to have a great big worship mosh pit here at The Message. I, I want to be people who are together, who are in proximity. I, Zoom's great, but you can't beat community, can you? My favourite Zoom call is probably the one that happens every Friday morning when a bunch of leaders, I'm sure... Um, you guys will know some of them. Leaders of large churches and ministries in Manchester gather just to encourage one another and share what we think the Lord's saying and spur one another on in these unprecedented times. There were three words that were brought to one of these Friday mornings. They meant a lot to me and I think they kind of sum up what's going on in the church at the moment, what's happening across the church in the UK and in the nations. The first word was classroom. 
It's like a classroom, you leaders. You know, we're the kind of people who love to teach others, love to tell others what to do, love to wave our arms about and explain the Word of God to people. Actually, three months ago, the Lord said, it's time to go into a classroom with your teacher, Jesus. Uh, just perhaps be a little bit quieter Perhaps be slow to speak for a change and quick to listen. Listen to Jesus. Get into his classroom. And I believe one of the things Jesus is saying is use this marvellous tool of the internet to spread the good news. It's great that the church has woken up to the internet in a fresh way. The, the power of this World Wide Web. I mean, how, how can it be that he took this lockdown for us to really embrace that? But the Lord's always looking for a people who are in his classroom, learning from him better ways to spread the good news. Right back in the first century, the Romans laid this incredible network of roads, the Roman roads, and the Lord was insistent that his missionaries went out on those roads to the far ends of the earth. In the Middle Ages, Somebody invented the printing press. Guess what? First book to be printed on the printing press was the Bible. And the Lord has insisted that the Bible be printed and the Word of God spread out around the world. And right now, the Lord wants us in his classroom to learn how to use the internet for his glory so we can spread the Word of God around the world. The first word was classroom. It's time for us to spend more time in the classroom with Jesus. The second word was greenhouse. Just before lockdown, a whole bunch of people brought this word to me. Isaiah 43 verse 18. See, I'm doing a new thing, says the Lord. Do not perceive it. I mean, every time we go into a new season, it is so weird. People bring those verses. They, they were the first scriptures that came to the message right back then, 1987, 33 years ago, when we birthed this thing. Uh, those scriptures came to us again and again. See, I'm doing a new thing. Do not perceive it. There'll be rivers in the desert and streams in the wasteland. The wild animals will honour me. Those are formed to declare my praise, it goes on to say. And the Lord is saying, this is like a greenhouse where new things are being germinated. New things that perhaps some of them need just a little bit longer in the greenhouse before they're planted out into community. See, I'm doing a new thing, says the Lord. And we need to be people who are listening because the Lord is speaking to people about how to plant beautiful new initiatives, new visions that can change the nation. Let's not be rushed in that. Let's not plant them out too quickly. Let's keep hearing the Lord, keep planning, keep dreaming, keep praying, keep in good relationship and community. So when these things are planted out, they can be super fruitful in our nation. And the third word that came to these leaders was pressure cooker. <laughs> Guess what? It's a time of pressure. I mean, I've never known pressure like this. The, the pressure, the, the anxiety, the underlying sense of fear that's in our nation. Fear around finances, fear around the future, fear around health, fear around so many things, our family, so many things. People are fearful. It's a pressure situation. And yet the beautiful thing is we don't need to walk in that pressure. We can be people who know a peace that passes understanding. And the times of pressure in the pressure cooker accelerate things. They make things taste a whole lot better. I believe in this pressure cooker season, the Lord is doing something with his church to make us more fit for purpose. Isn't it really fascinating? And I, I don't know whether there's anything to it, but it's just a fact, isn't it? That the virus has hit worse, the great Christian countries. The two revival lands in the world are China. The, the largest church in the world numerically now is in China. You know, over 150 million believers and grown from about 3 million when I was born. And back then they were under great persecution and the churches had been bulldozed and the, the pastors had been locked up and, and the missionaries left the country in, in fear. Will this fledgling baby church survive? Will it survive? It's grown, it's exploded. It's been a revival move. That's the nation where coronavirus started. Where was the next nation? And it jumped to, weirdly enough, Iran. Iran suddenly had this great wave of coronavirus deaths. Iran is the fastest growing church, percentage-wise, in the world. 
fastest growing evangelical church in the world. I mean, how nuts is that? How much the Lord is that? And then look where the virus has really taken hold significantly. It's been the UK, the US, the European nations, and now, of course, Brazil is taking a great hit. The great Christian countries, the, the nations that have sent out the missionaries and spread the word of God around. And it's almost like the devil's laughing, going, look what I've been able to do. Stop those people gathering for worship. Stop their silly prayer meetings. Stop their worship and their fellowship. But you haven't stopped us, devil. This is as it always does. It's going to backfire on us. It's going to backfire on you, rather. Like right the way back to the cross when the demons of hell were laughing as Jesus died on that cross. Little did they realise it was the greatest ever victory because Jesus rose from the dead, conquered sin and death once and for all. God's purposes will prevail. God will be known on the earth. Uh, we live in an amazingly exciting season. Something is happening. There's a shaking going on on the earth. And I want to be a man who's found faithful in this season. I don't want to live the way others do because I've got the Spirit of God with me. I've got His presence carrying me through every possible trial. I want to be somebody who gets in the classroom at the feet of my teacher, King Jesus, and I listen well and I take note, and I study, and I'm diligent, and I come out of that classroom prepared. I, I want to be people who plant great visions, great new visions. We've got all sorts of dreams about message TV and a, a, a national movement to feed the poor and, and so much more. Big mission stuff we're going to do globally at this season. God's helping us in the greenhouse to see his new thing. Let that be the case for every brother or sister who's watching this video this morning or this afternoon or this evening, whenever you're watching it. And the third thing is I even want to embrace the pressure hard as it is. So often down the generations, whether it is China or Iran or wherever they've seen revival, it's been in the face of believers who are willing to embrace pressure. The kind of pressure that could take some people out, but those with faces like Flint, those with the determination to serve King Jesus, keep going. And the pressure accelerates things. The pressure, rather than making them bitter, makes them better. Let it be the case, Jesus. Can I pray that for you, please? For you beautiful people in Lincoln. You know, I was looking forward to coming to the One Fest as I've done pretty much every year. I was looking forward to traveling around the world this summer. It ain't gonna happen, but Jesus is still on the throne. And Jesus has got his plans and he said, I'm going to build a church and we get to be part of the action. How amazing is that? Let me pray. Lord, thank you that you're our teacher and we want to learn well. Speak to us, Lord. Don't let us miss this moment. Let us plant some beautiful new things in the greenhouse of your Holy Spirit. And when they're planted out in community, I pray those new visions, those new dreams that you're giving us will produce great harvest for you. And even let us be people who embrace this precious season, this season of pressure where others fall over, others give in to fear. We keep going. We keep knitted into you by your spirit and knitted in with our brothers and sisters and we go out together and change the world. Let it be, Lord. Here we are. Here I am. Send me. Amen. Thanks for listening. Love you guys. Love Stuart and Irene and all the precious people in Lincoln. Let's keep going. God bless. Every week we at Alive say a simple prayer together to allow you to say yes to Jesus. So if anything you've heard has touched you, I would love you to say this simple prayer with me. Dear Lord Jesus, I need you. I need your grace to forgive me and your love to change me. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. Please forgive me for the sin in my life. I accept you as my Lord and Saviour. With your help, I will live my life for you. Amen. If you've prayed that prayer for the first time, we would love to get in touch with you. If you're watching from our website, please click on the Next Steps button. If you're watching from Facebook or YouTube, please visit our website. And on there, you can find out how best to get connected with our church. 
So good. And the fun does not stop there. We have got so many ways for you to connect. Every Sunday at 8 p.m. we have our Sunday Night Live. Where your location pastor and worship leader will be coming together for worship, conversation, and a little bit of word to help you throughout the week. On Thursdays at quarter past seven, we have our revived prayer meeting, which is a great opportunity as a whole church to pray for our cities, our towns, and our regions. And then throughout the week, we have our connect groups. If you're not part of a connect group, why not? You need to join. You can check our website out for more information on how to do that. But that's it from us. We hope you've had a great day. We hope you have a great week. We'll see you next Sunday. Bye. So